Welcome to the First Unitarian Universalist Congregation of Ann Arbor, Michigan. It is such a joy to be with you today for our annual Water Communion service. Water Communion is a celebration of the new congregational year and the beauty of what it means to gather together in community. While we wish we could be together in person, we've made new channels for the streams of love by gathering in this sacred space. We're also honoring the excitement and potential of the new year by hosting a week-long special event called Welcome You You Back Week, going on now through September 21st. This is a series of Zoom sessions that covers everything from pastoral care programs to how to facilitate small groups on Zoom to games and activities for kids in our spiritual growth and development classes. If you'd like to learn more, please visit our website at uuaa.org. Of course, every week we gather together and deepen our connections in our social hour, which is directly after service. To join us for that, just visit uuaa.org slash social hour. And if you're new to our congregation and want to learn more about us, please let the hosts know so that they can put you in a special breakout room. Whether you're new to our congregation or whether you've been coming for decades, please know how grateful we are that you're here. Welcome to this congregation. Welcome to the new year. Welcome to this time together. Hi everyone, it's Carrie, your communications ministry specialist. You might remember me from this summer as your student intern, and I am so excited to start off this church here with you all. Although there is a lot that looks different this year, there is much that remains the same, including the words we invoke each week as we light our chalice. I am back in my dorm room in college in Massachusetts. I'm reunited with my favorite chalice. And given the strict fire codes we have in the dorms, I will be using an electric tea light to light it. Um, but now is the time if you have a real flame or an electric candle or a chalice within yourself, now is the time to light it as we say our chalice lighting words. We light this chalice for the light of truth. We light this chalice for the warmth of love. We light this chalice for the energy of action. We light this chalice for the harmony of peace. Every year, we celebrate this community with an in-gathering service and a water communion. And every year, there is both old and new to celebrate. This is a new community. This combination of individuals has never existed in this space before, transcending physical limitations to create community together across time and space. We are each bringing so much to this community, and we will each benefit from each other's gifts. We have a covenant with each other, a promise that we make to be in community. Please join me in reciting those words and remembering our commitment to each other. The spirit of this church is love, and service is its law. This is our covenant with each other to dwell together in peace, to search for truth in love, and to help one another. All the water in the world is, well, all the water in the world. Water flows from the hose, it wobbles in blue pools. It fills your cup up. But where does it come from? Water doesn't come. It goes around. That rain that cascaded from clouds and meandered down mountains that wavered over waterfalls, then slipped into rivers and opened into oceans. That rain has been here before. 
thirsty air. Mix it from lakes. Sips it from ponds. Guzzles it from oceans. And this, this wet air swirls up till it's crowded into clouds where it hangs hotly around till cool air bumps through. And honey, those clouds just let it go and rain, rain, rain. Tap dance, avalanche, stampede of drips and drops and drumming a wealth of water. But far away, it's a different day. No sound but wind. Empty cup. Again. Dry grasses rustle. Dirts just dust. Everything waits for an open gate in a wall of clouds for rain sweet and loud to fill the well and start the stream on a living things dream of water for all to drink Use in tub or sink. Wash in, splash in. This wet wonder means grow, means life will flow through tigers, through trees, through you and through me. All, 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 all together now. All so precious, do not waste it, and delicious, we can taste it. Keep it clear, keep it clean. Keep earth green. Education should be a right, which opens the doors to the networks of care and knowledge which make better lives. But too often, our systems of education don't work well for some, don't work at all for others. Student Advocacy Center has been there since 1975 when can concerned parents and community members formed SAC to address racial inequities in resources, expectations, discipline, and outcomes for black youth. Today, SAC is headquartered in Ypsilanti with offices in Detroit and Jackson, making available a continuum of support to help students get back to school, stay in school, and find paths to success there. Student Advocacy Center roots their approach and practices deeply in the value of the voice of youth. They deeply value approaches which are anti-racist, trauma-responsive, restorative, and collaborative in aspiration and result. As schools prepare to go back, mostly online, education advocates and mentors are needed more than ever. Student Advocacy Center is helping families navigate the confusing choices, brokering resources, and providing the intensive support necessary for students to make progress. Today, we're raising money for Student Advocacy Center to allow our resources to make channels for the streams of love, 
access and justice that they may broadly run. On behalf of your community, I ask you reach deep within to the well of your own generosity to make the community's voice heard. On behalf of Student Advocacy Center, I'm asking you to help the community reach wide. UUAA.org slash giving is a place to start. Will you make a difference? Will you help our community make a difference? I thank you for your generosity. What a joy it is to be together again as the first Unitarian Universalist congregation of Ann Arbor, Michigan. We regather this Sunday following a tradition that exists throughout Unitarian Universalism, that of water communion, one that takes place uniquely at this time of our year in the early fall, mirroring the regathering that takes place in academic communities across our country at the same time. In a similar spirit to that in which academic communities regather for the purposes of learning and growth, we regather as well as a community committed to spirituality and ethics, shared learning and growth at the individual level and at the communal level, seeking to do that in a way that supports one another, even as we seek to transform and build a better and more just world around us. This year, as we do so virtually, I've been holding in my heart the imagery of my hometown of Pittsburgh, a town that is abundant not just in water, but is a place of confluence where different waters come together and meet. In just a moment, I'll invite you to step into that imagery with me. And as we do so, I invite you to also hold these words by a poet, a spiritual thinker by the name of Ganesha Michael Shapiro in a piece entitled, The Mouth of Two Rivers in Confidence of Confluence. He writes, Gather and collect, and then offer your sympathy. Feelings deflect our sorrow and antipathy. Life is brimming with good deeds. I remain steadfast in all that I seek. Sweet love is among us now. Her eyes and hands feed the mouths of two rivers. I chase winter into her bed. Our eyelids lift as we drift south, while lots of people desperately cling to their doubts like old lovers. May we continue to gather in that spirit and hold the image of confluence in our hearts. The poem that I just shared by Ganesha Michael Shapiro it provides a couple of ways to step into this imagery of a confluence. One is actually the physical imagery of two rivers, as we saw with the image of my hometown, Pittsburgh, meeting at a specific point. And as he says in the words of his poem, finding something amazing there, the spirit of love. You can take that as a journey, on a journey as we uh, find these confluence points in our lives. And one of the most beautiful, miraculous things possible is the experience and the discovery of love. The poem can also be a, a, a direct metaphor for two human beings. Two human beings, like two separate rivers, then meeting at a confluence and finding the beauty and joy of interpersonal love. Whichever imagery or interpretation we might want to bring to that particular poem, it speaks to the power 
of meeting at a confluence, of, of things that have had their own trajectory, their own journey, their own life course, their own vibrancy, energy, all of that, meeting at a particular point. As someone who grew up in that hometown of Pittsburgh, and I've been many, many times to that very point, that tip of that point, where these two mighty rivers meet, the Monongahela and the Allegheny, they become something new. And that confluence point can be a point of confusion, a little bit of chaos, a maelstrom of energy and swirls uh, as, the, as the waters are mixing and blending into something different and new. Think of that for a moment in terms of the enterprise that we have all committed ourselves to, that of community building, of offering ourselves, committing ourselves to sharing of ourselves within community. We bring all of who we are, experiences that include joy and beauty and goodness, experiences that include pain, disappointment, at times trauma, experiences that are informed by the societal times that we live in, civic and political uncertainty, aspirations and hopes for justice, for building a new way, a better way. We bring all of that. Unitarian Universalism is precisely that kind of faith, tradition, religion, spiritual option that requires us to check none of ourselves at the door. We bring our whole selves, all of who we are, all of the beauty, all of the joy, all of the struggles and disappointments, all of the fears and worries and concerns, all of the possibilities, the things we want to bring alive in our lives and in the world around us. We bring all of that to community. So does everyone each and every one of us. We're therefore, we're not a confluence of two rivers. We in our approximately thousand person community, maybe more in this virtual time in which people all across the globe are uh, joining us in community, at least a thousand points. Imagine, imagine the, the mixing and swirling of energy that that implies when all those different people from so many different life experiences and needs, hopes and desires, fears and concerns are coming together. That mixing and melding, the maelstrom, can, it has the potential of being chaos. And yet it isn't. Because we Unitarian Universalists have been this broad, this diverse, this all-encompassing, this open-minded, this expansive, not just recently, <laughs> but for centuries. And we're part of an intellectual tradition that spans millennia, not only centuries. This kind of yearning in the human heart has always existed for some. To live together into such all-encompassing breath, diversity of life and experience and knowledge and wisdom and skill to come together in these kinds of ways that we do as Unitarian Universalists. That hope, that seed has been there since the dawn of human possibility. And we do live into it. Within the container of community, and community provides some rough structure in our tradition, not overly defined, overly circumscribed, but some container exists. It's not a free-for-all chaotic maelstrom. Our principles, our ethical commitments in the world, who we're striving to be together, what we bring alive as community, and we bring our own interpretations and experiences to those principles, and yet the container, some loose container, exists. We begin to have scaffolding on who we are together as community, as how we are together as community. When the Allegheny and the Monongahela rivers join at that triangle point in Pittsburgh, they are not unbounded rivers that just continue on flowing in any and every direction. 
a new thing emerged that has boundaries and definition and beauty. On the other side of the swirling and mixing together is immense beauty. We learn in my hometown in Pittsburgh, we learn that the Ohio River is one of the major thoroughfares of our country, of trade, commerce, of people. I take pride in that. That the mixing and swirling produced, produced something of grandeur and importance. And that thing of grandeur and importance heading further south flows into and becomes the Mississippi. Such is the power of community when we come together. In this mixing and jumbling and combining of beautiful, unique experiences, it can be a little jarring. Who are we together? We might know who we are individually, but who are we together? It's not an unbounded journey. There's some boundaries, containers to hold us together in that in a loving and good way. And that is what emerges. That's what defines us, that commitment to beauty and love to art, to music and imagination and possibility, to the heart, to the yearnings and hopes that we're seeking to bring alive in the world, to love, to that deepest longing for companionship, to be seen and held and valued in the eyes of another. This is what we bring to one another at the confluence. May we enter more deeply into this time of communion, of coming together, of meeting at the confluence with our best selves, our highest hopes and ideals, our dreams and our longings, fully intact, and with the open-heartedness to share those with others in community with us. For we are mighty and greater together than we ever could be alone. May it be so. Here is water from our past water communion services. Water that has been saved each year and brought out again to be mingled with the water you would bring to the sanctuary and pour into the communal bowls at the start of each new church year. A reminder of our past, our ancestors, of the life-sustaining properties of water, and of our ongoing and unbroken connection to each other. I add this water to some water I have collected from my home, from church, and from the hospital where I am a chaplain. We will use this water in the first part of our water communion. We will use this water in a blessing. We each have the ability and the possibility to speak or think of words that confer, a, confer favor upon, that call upon a higher power if we choose, words to offer gratitude, hopes for the coming year, for safety, for wellness. I invite you into this practice with me right now. Connect with something you want to hold in the coming year, something that grounds you, that gives meaning to who you are. Perhaps it is someone right next to you, a child, their electronic device for learning, a pet, a necklace, a bracelet, scarf, ashes, a threshold, trees, plants, yourself. If you have access to that thing, take a moment to get it. Take a moment to get a small amount of water as well. There's time. Know 
hold it. You can do this later if you prefer. You have the power and the agency to do this ritual whenever you need it. the object in your hands and allow yourself to feel connected to the memories embodied in it. Allow yourself to feel a connection to the wisdom embodied in it. Now, with one hand, touch some water and then touch what you wish to bless. And if you are not near any water, your hand will suffice. Remember, your hand, as part of your body, is mostly made up of water. Your hand holds and releases water continually, even if imperceptibly. When I go down, down to the water, by the water, I feel it all. I chose to bless this stole, which connects me to my true self, to who I am. This particular stole was a gift from you, first UUAA, to mark my ordination. It was designed and sewn by a member of the community with pieces of material and beads from members of the choir. The connections are deep. On a personal level, it connects me to my calling, to sound, to beauty, to singing. At the community level, it connects me to you, the communities I participate in and am held by. And then even further, it connects me to the denomination and the vision of what ministers and Unitarian Universalism can bring to the world. It connects me to the work that I must engage in right here, right now. So may it be. Amen. Our individual stories flow within us, combine and mingle as they form larger streams and rivers and lakes and oceans. Our individual offerings gather momentum and strength until the confluence of our stories and images show us new ways of remembering our past, of being connected to our community right now, and of imagining our future. Come with me now, down, down to the river. Our grandchildren filled a bottle with water from Newfound Lake and brought it back to us. My water communion photo from two years ago. This water was collected from Lake Michigan, Lake Superior, Indian Lake, the Sturgeon River, and from Ann Arbor, my home. These are the sacred waters off Pender Island, British Columbia, and the orcas that swim past every day at 5 p.m. This is one of my sacred places. The sunset on Lake Michigan. The Detroit Zoo. Island Lake. Where I go down, down to the water, Botanical Gardens. September, swimming in Lake Superior. I love the Oregon Coast and Fire Bluffs, Lake Michigan. Our granddaughter offering us a cup of water from her play pool. The Huron River. The outdoors women outing to walk along our little cascades. At my parents' home in Traverse City. Sunset over Lake Michigan. September. Swimming in Lake Superior. Riverside Park, Ypsilanti. This was taken on the small lake in the UP where we live. Shiawassee National Wildlife Refuge. The Mekong River, Long Prome House. You found Lake The Huron River. Big storm blowing into Mekong. View from Family Cottage on Williams Park. Santa Island. Port Austin at Port Crescent State. A place that is very special to us. Higgins Lake. Rocky Mountain Arsenal. North Michigan. The 
water of this community has been flowing for over 150 years. We have added to the river our own individual blessings. We have shared sacred spaces of connection to water. By the water, we feel whole. Yet the water calls us to keep moving, to create waves of motion that will propel us into action, for there is much work to be done. Amen. May it be so. When I go down, down to the water, by the water of you. We join spokes in a wheel, but it is the center hole that makes the wagon move. We shape clay into a pot, but it is the emptiness inside that holds whatever we want. We hammer wood for a house, but it is the inner space that makes it livable. We work with being, but non-being is what we use. The 11th entry of the Book of the Way, Tao Te Ching. Now in this time, when we are entrusted to steward this congregation, to be part of this community of care and compassion, this circle we must keep whole even as it grows beyond the current shape and our expectations of late. What a beautiful thing that we almost grow with the circle. This is what it means to have a space called community, which holds all. And harnesses all of our energy together to summon our potential into the power that pours into the world judiciously, graciously, hoping to make a difference in the name of love. Justice is the work we must do with the greatest care. Careful not to crowd the world and what the world needs with our over zeal, our desire to get more for ourselves or to solve. There are places where we, we must do listen, where we must first find the empty space to hear the point of call. Fill your bowl to the brim and it will spill. Keep sharpening your knife and it will blunt. Chase after money and scrutiny and your heart will never unclench. Care about people's approval and you will be their prisoner. Do your work, then step back. The only path to serenity. The, the ninth entry of the Tao Now in this time, when more than ever, it is crucial that we know where, how, when to show up. Even when absent of every detail, when this community counts on us to be present to one another and the world counts on our community to be present, may the work ahead be like the bodies of water capable of gentle compassion and flow, and equally capable of mighty revolution for the land it encounters.
The earth return. 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 How beautiful it is to see and hold 
all those images that represent our individual journeys, the things that we have brought together here in community with one another for the year ahead. My beloved, is the, the time we are in is so hard, so demanding, so challenging, what it asks of each of us. The invitation to hold, to share, to process our, our grief, our worry, our fears, our losses, the hope and possibility of what can emerge in the year ahead, the power and the beauty, just as the Allegheny and the Monongahela flow into becoming the Ohio, which flows into becoming the mighty Mississippi, so too we hold that power and potential to bring alive dreams and possibilities that none of us could ever bring alive alone. Hold that precious, hold that dear, for it is. The world longs for and needs who we are as Unitarian Universalists. There is vision and beauty in the love and open-hearted, seeking, searching, being, doing that is represented uniquely in us as spiritual seekers. Know that and hold it dear. And may we each come back together again and again week after week, sooner than that, when needed, to be there for one another and bring alive the very best and beautiful possibilities of love and of community. Go in peace, my beloveds. Know that you are held in the encircling embrace of community until we meet again. One of the things I think we miss most about Water Communion is the presence of our Chalice Singers Choir. Um, this is usually their first uh, time singing again in the new year. And it's important, uh, especially on a day like Water Communion, that we get as many beautiful examples of what's possible with human potential when we come together around the same purpose meaning well by each other and the world. Now, we won't have an in-person visit from the Chalice Singers come to each one of our houses, unfortunately, uh, but uh, through the miracle of technology and with thanks to Carol Assatelli, I may just be able to share with you a few moments from past Water Communion where the Chalice Singers are getting ready to sing a song that by now is probably quite familiar. <laughs> 